To start off this video, I want to make sure you get a good look at the original bathroom in the state my parents bought the house in. Now, I haven't seen this room change in literally 23 years, so this year I wanted to treat my family to a new bathroom and get rid of the dated floral wallpaper, yellow floors, and completely outdated decor. To begin with what became a massive renovation for me, the wallpaper just had to come down. It was the largest eyesore in the whole room, in my opinion, so this had to go first thing once I removed all of the wooden accents like this wooden towel rack as well as the hand towel rack and the um, old previous curtains. I did some research and found the best way to remove the top layer of wallpaper was simply catching an edge of the paper and lifting from the seam. The bottom layer, however, is a bit more challenging. What I did was get a spray bottle and filled it with a three-part mixture of hot water, fabric softener, and vinegar. This breaks down the wallpaper paste that originally was poorly placed onto my particular room and allowed for me to come in and scrape it off. After a long time of laboriously scraping and damaging a lot of my walls, I realized what helped me further on was actually sanding this top layer off, allowing my spray to penetrate further and allow for easier removal. Just a quick note, Turn your power off. Do not do this around live electric outlets. I opened the windows for this part and worked during the daylight and covered my outlets for additional safety while I was spraying directly onto this wall, as well as anywhere I thought any backsplash might get onto the outlets, even though the power was off. You do not want to mess around with potentially electrocuting yourself or having any electrical accidents like fires or anything like that. So. Just remember, you'll be covering a good inch around the outlets with an outlet plate cover as well, so I wouldn't worry about making this area perfect just yet until you get to that point. As you can see, once I began sanding my walls prior to spraying, the adhesive basically began melting off the wall and it became a way easier task. You can even see me dabbing away some of the droplets that are sort of rolling down the wall with a piece of paper towel. Again, that's just to protect my outlets and make sure that we're not having any electrical issues later on from these chemicals seeping in or staying there um, or causing any kind of issues with um, the electrical once it does come back on. <laughs> Next, I began fixing my walls with wood filler. I used this because it goes on bright pink, dries white to let you know it's fully dry, and it's also easy to smooth with water, so it makes it really easy to clean up with just your hands, no sandpaper needed to get an even finish. Okay, ladies and gents, I do have a lesson for you here. My dad wanted me to try using a specific floor compound on the walls. And though I had a gut feeling this wouldn't work well and pointed out it was floor compound, he asked me to try it regardless. Guys, please listen to your guts. This compound completely screwed over a portion of the walls I was repairing post wallpaper and its grainy, gritty texture wouldn't smooth no matter how much I took my electric sander to it. It was not worth it and I should have stuck to my guns and completed the wall repairs to my own preferences. My dad ultimately regrets not just letting me work in a way that I found productive and necessary because in the end, while technicalities exist and you should be open to learning new techniques, if you have a gut feeling, 
about doing something a certain way, you should probably just save yourself the hassle and do things the way you're comfortable and the way you're skilled at to avoid creating more work for yourself like I ultimately did. Uh, and if you do have a similar issue and you are having to sand down portions of your walls, uh, I would recommend wearing a mask and safety glasses or a respirator if you have one to avoid any harmful dust or debris getting into your mouth, nose, and eyes while you are working. Yanking off trim with a crowbar along with my boyfriend who begged to help part with this part of the project as it was a call to his previous days on construction sites with newly fixed walls, I made quick work of that process, being mindful of the long nails protruding from the backs of the trim and made really quick work of removing the medicine cabinet from the wall. Mine was incredibly simple, I don't know if everyone's is by standard, just four screws in each corner and a bit of arm muscle to wiggle it free from its home inside the wall without dropping and breaking the mirror, and it was free and ready to go. Something I absolutely have to explain before I show you the rest of the video is what drywall is made of and how I will be cutting it to fill the medicine cabinet hole. So drywall is made up of three parts. The first two are known as the facer and backer boards. This is the cardboard that surrounds the filler in the middle that is called gypsum. That's that crumbly white material um, that I am cutting through in just a moment. Now to cut your drywall, I am cutting the outer portion. So I'm cutting the drywall from the board at least an inch larger than the hole itself. The dotted line you're seeing on the screen right now is where you will cut most of the way through to the exact measurements of the hole you're trying to fill, leaving that facer board intact. Now what you're left with is the facer board extending past the gypsum and the back board that allows you to adhere the board internally and externally to your wall. So what you're seeing me do right now is basically lining those measurements. Um, I've already measured everything out and now I am just drawing my lines so that it makes cutting it easier. I am taking a DeWalt little knife here and slicing through the backboard. So this is the dark layer that you're looking at right now. So I'm slicing through that layer, making that initial cut, and then I am cutting out the filler. So I'm cutting out the backboard and the gypsum, but I am leaving the facer board intact. So, and you'll see mine is kind of broken up. It's ripped in places. It's not super neat. It's not very nice. If you can get it super perfect, more power to you. I'm sure that will come with time, but this was my first time cutting drywall at all. So mine is a little janky in places, but you know what? I will take that over nothing at all. So what you see me doing here now is I am cutting the hole out to be a little bit bigger because the measurements are a little bit off. You will have to probably do this as well just because the measurements for this hole were not exact because the hole wasn't even all the way around and I wasn't going to sit there for eight hours and do the math for this part. So what I'm doing is just basically making space for the board that I cut out and just making sure it fits super snug and secure. And as you can see from that happy dance, uh, that was successful. Then I am taking my liquid nail in my caulking gun and going all the way around on the outside and the inside where the inner board is going to fit. And I'm smoothing that out with my finger, cleaning off my fingers just so the liquid nail doesn't sit there and pushing my board into place, making sure the internal boards have sealed with the liquid nail. And now I'm going ahead and smoothing these outer bits of facer board with the liquid nail in my hands, making sure everything is nice and flat and smooth. Following all of that complex information I just threw at you, I am taking a spackle. So this is a material that goes on pink and dries white, as you'll see in a moment. And I am going over the entire board just to make sure everything is smooth and straight. But I am definitely focusing on these edges. As you can see, I have a little bit of lifting on the end here. I probably should have gone in with liquid nail again just to ensure that those were as flat as possible. But 
we are here now we are making mistakes we are learning from them that is the way in 2021 we are just learning 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 so i am going over this area three times entirely just to make sure things are as secure as possible and just make sure that this replacement drywall isn't going anywhere. I definitely want to make sure that is as secure as possible, which again is why I'm going over the length of the entire space and not just the edges, but definitely focusing on those edges to make them as smooth as possible. Now that all the not so fun work is completed, the fun parts can begin. I began by priming the entire room, cabinet, ceiling, and all till it was basically a giant white box. <laughs> And then I sat down to paint the cabinet this medium shade of blue by Bear in Deep Breath. At first I was nervous about using cool tones because that really isn't my current style, but the end result came out so beautifully I never should have doubted my choices on colors. It comes together amazingly well in the end. Again, that lesson, trust your gut. <laughs> I gave my cabinet and its doors three coats each for good measure and I alternated using a brush on the areas connecting the cabinet to the walls and a roller to get a nice even finish throughout. I left the inside of the cabinet white to make sure the inside looked clean and bright with no light source since it can get pretty dark at night in this room.
the walls massively transformed this entire space. You're gonna see me using bare paint in lunar surface for the walls and smoky white for the ceiling to give some contrast and add height to the room. Honestly, I could have stopped after painting and it would have been such a massive transformation. That's how atrocious the original wallpaper had been in here. Even little changes like painting completely fresh in the space and brought it into 2021. But I pushed out to make the most out of this reno and add some personality into the tiny space as well. I had Home Depot cut me two pieces of wood that I had pre-measured and actually made a template out of cardboard and sort of brought up to sort of gauge the measurements that I would need exactly to fit my space perfectly and symmetrically. So obviously for your space, these measurements are going to change if you're doing something quite similar. So um, I don't really think it's super necessary that I give the measurements that I personally use happened to work out. I took a two by four and asked them to cut it basically into, I believe I used 31 inches, but don't quote me on it. <laughs> it's been a while since I've had these things cut when I'm doing my voiceover, but I did have them cut my shelving out and then I went ahead and primed and painted it using the bare using the bare primer in just the white and then going in with the bare paint in nightclub. I wanted nightclub because it was sort of an off black, more of a charcoal-y gray color, not so dramatic like black, but still providing that visual interest and sort of modern flair that a darker color gives to a space, especially in a room as small as this. I didn't want to overwhelm it with a stark black. I definitely wanted to go with something a little bit softer and a little bit more feminine, but something that was still going to pull like the drama, the, the spice, if you will. And I also used this color on the trim as well around the room just to sort of bring in all the black accents that I really feel are going to modernize this beautiful space. One thing you will see me doing in this part of the video is seeing me pre-drill holes and then drill holes to the actual size of the anchors I'm using for my shelving unit. Now, if you are drilling into a stud, you will not have to use anchors, but because of the way that this room was built, there wasn't really a good spot two feet above the toilet for my first shelf to go into a stud. Now that they say you need to place a shelf, if you're going to place a shelf above your toilet, to place it about two feet above where the highest point of the toilet uh, tank is. That is so obviously if you need to clean the tank or replace the water in the tank or repair the toilet in some way or even change the toilet out entirely if those things need to be done in the future you don't want to have to remove an entire shelving unit and have to go about doing all of that 
basically another renovation in order to just replace one part of your bathroom so I definitely recommend to stick with that measurement I have seen people doing shelving right across the toilet and while it might look really nice and camouflage an area of the bathroom that you might not think is very savory it definitely can in the end and in the long run sort of kind of screw you over for lack of a better term of phrase um it is unfortunate but that is why i went with sort of the rough two feet above where the toilet tank sits um, just so that i was basically ensuring that i wouldn't have to remove my shelving unit in order to fix anything should a problem occur i just want this project to be convenient for the future basically i want to make sure i don't have to redo anything or do anything more than once i want to make sure that if there are any problems in the future they are easily fixable and i won't have to sort of work around my previous work in order to fix something that happens to go wrong i try to think forward into the future and not as if anything is going to be perfect forever so that's why I'm making this as sort of accommodating as possible at this point in the design. take some of my water here and I'm going to mix my blue in with my gray to create a really beautiful but also pretty neutral gray This is watercolor so it mixes super easily um, I actually did quite a bit of watercolor painting um, before I'm actually an award-winning watercolorist if you didn't know <laughs> I won a couple of awards in school and did a lot of art shows so just because I want to make this um, sort of an optional like I, I bought two frames so I want to have options on where to put this I'm just going to fill the entire page with sort of these asymmetric sort of dots and like brush strokes and I want to have varying degrees of paint You can even get in there, you know, with the other side of the brush and fill in some of those spaces. And I think the more confidently you paint, um, the nicer it looks. Like, you don't have to be a great painter to do this. Obviously, I'm pretty much just taking my brush, I'm moving it up, I'm sort of pushing down, and going up, but like this isn't like a skill, you know? This is literally just the simplest of artworks.
So that is our first one done. So, all right, for the second one, I kind of want to play around. So I've got this big fan brush and I'm just going to take it in that gray and that blue that I was using just a second ago. And I'm gonna dip that in the paint and then dip it in the water. And let's just see. Oh, I love, love that line. Okay, so I definitely want to stay doing something like that. So then let's take it from over here. Actually, I kind of love that. Should I do a fifth one? No, no. I like the empty space. Um, I actually quite like that. That is really fun to me. So today is the day that I start painting the floor. I have to scrub it down first. Um, with a Mr. Clean or a Melamine sponge. Pro tip, if you are cleaning, Melamine sponges are the same um, as <laughs> Mr. Clean sponges. Um, I look a mess just because it's, it's, it's a messy day. Okay, now you're seeing me go in with the Rust-Oleum floor paint specifically. I did realize while I was painting that you can technically use most likely any base color. You don't have to use Rust-Oleum's floor paint for this part. At least to my knowledge, you can use any floor paint. Really what's going to do it for you is the sealant. Now the sealant is sort of... It reminds me of sort of a wood finish stain, at least that's what it smells like. It's very similar in concept, sort of just a varnish or a lacquer that goes on top of your floor to make sure that it doesn't scuff or chip away over time. I'm going in with this floor paint by Rust-Oleum in Ultra White, going in really thin coats and I'm working it through with a roller so that it gives a nice even texture. As you can see, this floor, while it's been thoroughly cleaned, still is definitely not an attractive color and has some sort of, I don't want to say like antiquing because that is sort of a positive word, but it's definitely some darkening over time as well as like this floor was never like white. It was definitely still yellow when it went in. I'm not saying that it's like that disgusting, but the color is pretty bad if I'm just honest. So I'm working in really thin coats so that it dries quickly. And yes, I do have dog poop bags masking taped to my feet. Don't judge me. I am 100% copying DIY Danny. Don't judge me, okay? If it works, it works, and it did work. Um, so I had a hell of a time with this floor because I do have three dogs, so I had to constantly vacuum and sweep out this area, and I still sealed in some dog hair. Again, please give me some slack. It's my first time painting a floor. So as you can see, the first coat is pretty patchy and see-through, but that will go away, I promise. You will see the second and third coats go on momentarily. And then I did two coats of the sealer. Looks like a brand new floor. So here I am starting the nails for my trim. I 100% could have done this better and I do regret it a little bit, but honestly, at this point in the <laughs> project, I was kind of just so over it. Um, again, I could have drilled these holes so that these went in easier. I could have um, just made them sort of a pocket screw hole so that the entry point of the nails wasn't as visible. I could have done a million things to make this go smoother, but 
I just didn't. I regret it 100%, but after cutting the trim and painting it and knowing that I'd have to seal it and wood fill it and paint it again when it was on the walls, and having this project go on for about a month at this point just because of delays with like the plumbing had a problem and I needed a plumber and then the electrical had problems and you know my dad had to come in and help with that one part and just the whole thing had just become very frustrating and you didn't even see those parts so could I have done a better job yes but the trim is on the wall <laughs> hi you guys so today we are doing the decorating part of this video. I am so excited to show you guys what we're gonna do. So I'm going to jump right in and we are going to decorate the space and it is going to be phenomenal. This project is basically done now. I for one am so excited to finish this off with you guys. So come on, let's go. Finally, I am getting to do the finishing touches. So I am adding my beautiful artworks. As you can see, once they are matted and in the frames from Ikea, they look stunning. Oh my gosh, the reveal for these is so just absolutely amazing. I have my little brass tea light holder also from Ikea. And then these amazing thrift finds. I found these beautiful tea light candle lanterns and then I'm adding in my new towel on my new towel rack and my new soap dispenser and we are about to show you the final reveal just to remind you of how absolutely hideous this room was before again I know you just got a sneak peek with the finishing touches but oh my god you guys this room was such an amazing project. It has lifted my confidence so much and made me feel so incredibly capable of home renovation and home decor. And yes, I am showing off my outfit here shamelessly in this stunning oval mirror. I added a bamboo plant, a little room freshener, along with, again, my gorgeous amazing thrifted lantern finds and you are finally getting to see the new faucet that I put in the new well not me so much as a plumber that had to come in and help And I did make the decision to change the doorknob as well as paint the back of the door uh, the amazing gray that matches the walls and I just thought with the brown it looked so dated still and I figured with the monotone gray color it just really let the room shine and it let the room be modern basically uh
And real quick, I just wanted to show you what it looks like at night with the candles lit. Again, these thrifted finds were fantastic. These are amazing. I'm so glad that I was able to snag these two for the bathroom and I snagged two for myself as well in sort of a more mauve pink tone and a, another clear. Um, and I just, I could not be more thrilled with how these look with the black instead of the silver hardware on them. I just gave them a quick coat of spray paint and I think it changed them completely. Um, Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I will see you guys next week. I am so excited that you finally got to see this video. It's been so long. Anyways, I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.